Hey, what's up everybody? Today is a great day. Uh, today is a great day uh, because we are having a day of testimony, a day of faith, and a day of gratitude. Because today is the very first Every Nation Bryanston Vision Sunday. Uh, if you are here for the very first time or second time, what you might not know is that this church is seven months old. And over the last seven months, we have seen God do things that have completely exceeded our expectation. We started this church with a group of people, about 16 of them, with a passion to know God and make Him known. Uh, months down the line, uh, it is crazy to us that close to 200 people call this their spiritual family and we are so privileged to be in the mission of God with the people of God in this season and in this time in history. Um, it has really been uh, such an amazing time and I hope as we look back and as we look in the present and as we look forward that you won't only be inspired and challenged but you would be encouraged to be a part of what God is doing uh, through us and in us as every nation Bryanston. But before we get into that, I want to take a moment to look at these memories together of what we have been through together over the last seven months. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed those memories. Now, before we continue, uh, we want to do something special today uh, by having a Vision Sunday quiz. And here is the take, right? That if you answer any one of these cor uh, questions correctly on the chat box, and you're the first one to answer correctly on the chat box, we are going to send you a meal sometime this week from Every Nation Bryanston just to show you love. So I've got two questions. Get ready right now on the chat box to uh, answer. And here's the first one. On the 26th of January is the day where we had our launch service. In that service, by the end of that service rather, was the wine bottle opened or sealed by the end of that service? Was the wine bottle opened or sealed by the end of that service. I will never forget the looks on people's faces that day uh, when that wine bottle came out. Uh, we actually almost lost the whole church on day one. Uh, we have upgraded ever since. Now we just open water bottles and stuff. So the Lord has been good to us. So second question is this. And again, get ready on the chat box for the question two. Question two is this. Every single Sunday when new visitors come to our church, we donate a specific amount of money to a charity of their choice. Do we donate 50 Rand, A, B, 80 Rand, or C, 100 Rand for each visitor that comes to every nation, Bryanston, to a charity of their choice? Is it A, 50 Rand, B, 80 Rand, or C, 100 Rand? Again, post on the chat box and one of our leaders will uh, get in touch with you and we will be able to send you a meal during the week. 
I want to share with you some testimonies of what God has done over the past seven months. And honestly, it has been such a phenomenal time. Firstly, we have seen 49 people give their lives to the Lord in the past seven months. This is amazing. This is amazing. Uh, many of those people have attended our Pathways class along with many other people in Bryanston where uh, Boris, Luyanda and Harold have been leading these classes and helping people to take their next steps in the faith. I wanna encourage you again right now as I do for so many Sundays, if you have never done Pathways, whether you are new to the faith or old to the faith, you will not regret it. The testimonies of people who have done Pathways are so incredible. I want to encourage you to sign up today for our Pathways class that happens every single Sunday at four o'clock. We praise God for each and every person who gave their lives to the Lord over the past seven months. Praise God for 49 people who have made uh, heaven celebrate and have a, have a party because they made a decision to follow Jesus. That's amazing. Secondly, um, we have seen, and this is conservative, uh, over 150 people uh, come through our doors as visitors, either virtually or physically, here at Every Nation Bryanston over the last seven months. That again is phenomenal. And as you know, we donate 80 Rand for each person who visit us, whether it's their first or second time. We donate this to either a charity called ADAPT or Ububele or the Love Trust. And what was quite awesome is that uh, uh, some time ago, we got an email from uh, the Love Trust charity and they sent us a picture of this beautiful girl who we have had the chance of sponsoring her education only because you invited a friend to church. And that is absolutely God's grace. So again, thank you for being a people who continue to invite people to know God and make Him known. Lastly, I want to share with you uh, about the generosity of this house, your generosity. I cannot thank you enough for being a people who not only give, but a people who give generously even during dark times like COVID-19. You are amazing. Thank you for being the church you are. Uh, since the beginning of the year, we've had the privilege of giving not only to Green Door, which was part of our Do Something initiative, uh, we've also given to causes around mosques, uh, around food uh, uh, giving uh, in our city, but also we've given to people who have need and churches also who have need. And it is with such a grateful heart that I announced to you that over the past seven months, you as Every Nation Bryanston have given close to 140,000 Rand to people in need during this time. That is again, incredible. Lest we think that these testimonies are normal, they're not. The average church doesn't make it past a year, let alone uh, uh, experience some of the things that we have been experiencing. What has happened in our church is not normal. And Lord, we, we give you praise for that. We, we give God praise for the fact that he would allow us to impact people's lives, even as far as the Val and even Transkai, where we've had the privilege of even sending money to, towards a cause there of people being given food, all because of your giving. Lastly, I wanna thank you for being a brave church. Uh, uh, some time ago, we started a conversation around race. Uh, that conversation so happened to uh, end up being watched by over a thousand people, and we got comments and reviews from people in Dubai, Gaborone, Cape Town, uh, Tswane, uh, the US, the UK, uh, all of which just really uh, so excited and so thankful that we were actually willing to have the conversation. I've he since heard that many people have been inspired to start these similar conversations in their own church, and that is all because you have been a church that is willing to dive in to brave conversations. And again, I must thank you for being that kind of church. So we've looked back 
and really grateful for all that God has done. And I want us to take a moment to look in the present. And I thought it would be quite cool to look in the present by hearing testimonies from people in our Bryanston family who have seen God come through for them in some interesting and powerful ways. And I really pray that these testimonies you are going to hear will challenge you, inspire you, and encourage you to believe God even during this season of COVID-19. Hi, I'm Renee Nation Bryanston, Nobu here. I'm so excited to share my testimony with you guys on this Vision Sunday. So at the beginning of the year in January, I was just a single girl living alone, trying to do, you know, what single 30 year olds do, living her best life. And fast forward to six months later, and I am now officially betrothed to be married and I have a baby. Um, my journey to motherhood has been one of extreme faith and a really good God. So a family member of mine and her husband are just not in a position to be able to fully parent their daughter. And so through prayer and consultation, I made the decision that I would take um, the baby in to come and live with me and to become her official legal guardian. And that has been a very exciting journey for me, a journey of faith a journey of um, laying my fears and my burdens before the King and trusting that God who calls us to do something is more than able to empower us to live out that calling. And her name is Cindy Swatimungosi and she is 15 weeks old and she's an absolute delight. And I just want to encourage you guys because um, in the last couple of months the world has been going through the most and we have all just been struggling to figure out what's going to happen next, what am I going to do, people are lose jobs and things like that but I want to let you know when I took my step of faith in taking Utembi to come and live with me it was a real um, scary moment for me to question whether I'd be able to adequately provide whether I had the skills and the knowledge to be able to mother her well um, and I'm so excited to say that it's been an amazing couple of weeks of having her here with us and um, it's been a real blessing and I've seen God move in places where I didn't think that there would be movement and um, like I've had some favor in my work in the last couple of months uh, I've, we've received funding for some of our projects and a no turned into a yes in the last couple of um, days and I believe that even in the midst of a pandemic, God is still good. He's still moving. And when we take bold steps of faith, he's still able to just come through and shower us with his love. And I'm reminded of the story of the woman, of the widow um, who Elijah met and um, with a jar of oil. And I was reading the story the other day and something stuck out to me that says that before Elijah met her, God told him that he had commanded her to feed him. But when Elijah met, she didn't know this command because she didn't have enough. And it stirred up such faith and confidence in me that sometimes even before situations arise, that we have to um, exercise the courage of faith to take on a responsibility. God has already commanded it ahead of time that we would be able to do it. And so I'm so excited that I have a baby that I have been able to take care of and God has given her good health and my fiance and I are properly planning a wedding and um, just seeing God's faithfulness even in the midst of all the chaos. And I want to encourage everyone that when we take bold steps of faith, God is always there to meet us. He is so trustworthy. He is so dependable. Even in the midst of chaos, there is a great commandment for us to be providers and to meet the needs of people in real meaningful ways that challenge us, but allow God to meet us where we are. So I'm so excited for the rest of the year. I don't know what else God is going to do in my life as I plan my wedding and enjoy the journey of motherhood. God bless you guys. My name is Harold Olukune, for those of you who may not know me. And I love Jesus. And I serve at Every Nation, Bryanston. So COVID, as we all know, uh, we have all been impacted uh, by this global pandemic. But even in that impact, I have seen the grace of God. So I'm going to share some 
low lights that God turned, and some highlights that have happened, which all are a testimony of what God did during COVID. Low light. My mom, God rest her soul, passed away on the 25th of April of this year. That was slam bang in the middle of COVID. And not being able to go for the funeral, not uh, being able to, you know, socialize and interact with spiritual family the way we would normally do if there was no pandemic was very difficult. It was quite difficult. Uh, my sisters, one is in the States, the other one's in the UK, me being in South Africa, we all couldn't go. But in the midst of that, God was so faithful. He was gracious. Um, his peace, his comfort was there. We came united as a family like never before. And even up to now, we are still close as we remember the memory of our beloved mother. Highlights. With the highlights, uh, two highlights I want to share about. One, uh, during COVID, uh, stuck in the house, especially in the, in the key time of the lockdown, uh, one of my sons, Anganati, had a serious problem with his back. There was lots of pain and he couldn't sit properly. He had rubbed on the, those ointments, deep heat that you would normally rub on, but still the pain was persisting. And during uh, the Sunday, after the Sunday service, uh, that we, we watched online um, uh, from Bryanston, we decided to pray for him. And guess what? In that time, we all laid hands on him in the name of Jesus, and God miraculously healed his back. The pain was gone. He could move around, and he even went to tell a testimony uh, to his, his circle of God's goodness. Another highlight is um, having seen... Uh, God just bring us together online through pathways. I have grown in the word of God. I have grown in understanding God, in knowing God and, and being able to make him known uh, through pathways. So we, we, we just uh, sharing with lots of, of, of people who would come in and out, uh, learning the word, you know, knowing God, his plan, his design, etc., uh, has been quite a blessing uh, because because of uh, COVID and being online, uh, we've been able to connect. And then finally, I have, have a passion for the gospel, as you can see, Jesus at the door. And Jesus at the door involves interacting with people. So COVID hits and you wonder how you're going to do it. As I was praying and contemplating, the, the CRT opportunity came up, crisis response team went to share, and in the sharing um, and ministering to the people who would come for food parcels and soup and bread, I managed to get an opportunity, even with the social distancing, to share the gospel. And by God's grace and goodness, lots of people got saved, but I got the opportunity of introducing three people to to Jesus Christ. So I'd like to encourage you that even in this time of COVID, Jesus is Lord and the gospel needs to be proclaimed and God is good. That's my testimony. God bless you. Hi, every nation Bridested. My name is Tainita and I'm joined with my mom, Vanessa Paramal. Um, we are going to share a little bit of our story and a little bit of how we got to where we are right now. Um, the reason that I'm talking is because my mom recently went through a laryngectomy, which is the removal of her voice box and your larynx, which are one and the same thing. Um, because she has a super, or she had a super rare cancer called chondrosarcoma, which is, uh, which starts in the cartilage cells of your body. Um, so some people will have it in different joints and my mom happened to be, I guess, one of the rare, rare, rare cases where it occurred in her larynx. Um, and so we removed her voice box not too long ago on the 13th of May during COVID-19, which is something I don't think we ever um, had experienced or had thought that we would have to go through. But... Um, we're here now, and so throughout this little thing, my mom might type um, 
and you'll hear her uh, electronic voice. Her name is Tessa. She's meant to be a South African voice, but we don't think she really sounds like that. Um, and she has an electro larynx as well, which she's learning to use. And then in a few months' time, she'll go in for a procedure to put in a Provox valve, which is um, it, it's, it helps her with speech as well. So she'll never have she'll never have her own voice because she has a stoma now. Um, she's currently wearing a scarf, so you guys can't see it. But she has a so she has a stoma now. Um, which is a hole in her neck over here, which is where she breathes from. Um, and so she is currently just adapting to her new life. Um, I think something that we hadn't really thought of when we started this journey was just how how covered we were by our friends and family in the church. Um, my mom goes to Every Nation Rosebank and I now go to Every Nation Bryanston. Um, and so my mom's going to say something really quickly. We thank God for his favor that Dr. Ishmael also days the operation and cancer was God's gift to give us life. Um, so she says we thank God that for his favor and that Dr. Ismail um, also just took this battle to to God. So on the day that we found out, or if you, I think the day before we found out what, it was chondrosarcoma, Dr. Ismail had sat with my mom, my dad, and my brother in his rooms while I stayed at home. because it, um, It's just a lot. Like, we can't all go places because of COVID. So I stayed at home and he was on the phone with all of us and with my mom face to face. And he had said to us, I can only do so much. There's only so far I can take this battle. But at the end of the day, it's in God's hands. And I think for some people, that might be something that's an uneasy thing to hear from their surgeon. But I think for my mom and for myself, it was very comforting to know that this battle was not hers alone and that even her surgeon who is not of the same faith as us but who um, who is so so part of the story he was able to then just help he was able to hold that space for her so um, my mom contacted Pastor Sai from Every Nation Rosebank I had then contacted all my uh, friends and Pastor Serve and Pastor Marsh at um, Bryanston and we had prayer warriors all around us all the time. We had people coming to the hospital to pray with us. Not that we were allowed inside, we stood outside um, while she had her procedure and we had people come and stand and pray outside the hospital with us. We had people come and stand and pray outside our house without us even knowing. Um, I think the last thing my mom did before she left the house was um, she like created a little area where she I think said that she had prayed like the loudest that she had ever and I think it's sometimes so um we're so we're so consumed by the pain and so consumed by the anger that we forget to go we forget that God has given us so much grace and my mom held that space for us she reminded us that this is not like the end it's just a new way of us dealing with life and so it didn't work out the way we thought it was I, I prayed with everything in me that she would be able to keep her larynx and the miracle I thought was going to happen might not have but the miracle is her sitting here getting able being able to live her life being able to be a part of my brother and I's life being able to carry on her job with JT Communications and she uses her new voice so beautifully. She has created a space where people are not afraid to talk about cancer or about a disability or about a problem that they might have because we don't have to deal with things by ourselves. We have community and we have places where people love us and I think um, my mom and I have completely given into that every nation spirit of that like there is a home and there is a place where you are so appreciated so every time we travel around the world if we're there on a Sunday we make an effort to go to an every nation that we have seen so we've gone to one in, South, in Rio we've gone to one in Mumbai 
And we um, we use that time to really just feed into the Every Nation family and feed into where we feel the safest and where we feel carried. So while it might not all have been like beautiful and sunrise and sunshine at the end, and I don't think we're at the end yet. I think that we're still very much in the in the storm. Um, we know that God has done so much for us and that even when we feel sad or we feel angry that there's um there's just always this mo this this covering that's around us okay. yeah so she was really lucky we, she had people praying for her around the world there were people um praying in mosques and in temples and in synagogues which we just never ever ever thought would happen um my mom created a blog called miraculous moments where she so openly shared her story and she so openly shared that god was going to be at the center of this and i think that that's something a conscious decision that she made when she found out was that god was going to be what had held our family together what we continue to go to so um my mom made my dad and my brother pray and they they don't go to church and they are on their own paths but she held holy communions and she she made it so apparent that she was not going to walk in alone because she didn't have to and because she knew that maybe God was using this to do something else so I think there's still moments where we're angry and there's still moments when we're sad and there's still moments where I cry about everything but at the end of the day, I think we're learning that like everybody's journey is just that. It's a journey. There is no one place where we end. There is no one thing that happens. But like enjoying the good moments is so important and feeding into that and enjoying the people that are around you and telling them that you love them and holding your family and friends close because I think for us that's our biggest thing is that we didn't choose to do it alone we chose to share it with our family and friends we chose to share it with our connect groups in our church and we chose to allow people in which I think I'm so grateful that my mom let us do that because she was in hospital for 29 days for 24 days and for those 24 days we weren't allowed to see her so to any family or anybody I guess who has family in hospital right now we really just do sympathize with you she said just keep the faith if you guys couldn't hear yeah. hi everybody my name is Corin. I'm part of the Every Nation Bryanson Church with my husband Andrew and our four children I was asked for by Surf to give a bit of a testimony regarding my COVID experience at first, I didn't think I was that sick. I was working quite hard at the time as I was employed with a company involved in the COVID response. The virus came as a sudden, unexpected halt to everything. I remember saying to my colleague, I just need a, an hour to rest. I'll be back soon. But then the next morning, I had to message him with, I'm going to the doctor. Hopefully she can give me something to feel better. I did not feel better not for the following two weeks. I tested that morning and I got my result the next day. This is a very complex illness. You, res you feel responsible, not only for your health, but for the health of others. You are constantly worried about your family, your friends and your colleagues. I went into self-isolation, which is a very lonely place. During this time, the only people I saw was my husband in full PPE as he came to see if I needed anything, and my kids through the window. This was if I was awake enough to be aware. I was incredibly ill. I could not hold myself up. I've never been this sick and never for this long. I'm very thankful for the outcome and I'm very aware that it's not the case with everyone. I was very weak and I did not have the energy to sit up, let alone read, watch, or listen to anything. So all I could do is actually let God be God. I can't really call it a conversation. It was just that he was there and he knew. In that very lonely place, he is the God that sees me. If you read Genesis 16, 
the God who revealed himself to Abram reveals an important new facet of his character to Hagar. She's just been cast out by Sarai and was feeling isolated and alone. But God himself reveals to her, himself to her in such a desperate place as he is the God who sees. In verse 13 it says, Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are God who sees. For she said, Have I not even here in the wilderness remained alive after seeing him who sees me with understanding and compassion? Therefore the well that she was at was called Bir La Hairoi, well of the living one who sees me. And as terrible and as alone as I was feeling, I knew that he saw me. We as Christians are fortunate to know that we are never alone and that God always sees us. Siv asked me if I actually saw God, and in a way I did. The way that I saw God was in the response of my friends and even people that I did not know so well. Galatians 6 verse 10 says, we need to do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Falling ill also showed me afresh the importance of belonging to a community. As people learned about my infection, there was an immediate reaction. All of this that we experience in church is not something abstract, that is something on paper, or a theory that will someday in the future we will see, but it's palpable right now. While I was sick, I did not as a mother have to worry that my family would be taken care of. My friends who are part of this community made sure that my family was fed every night. They bought food, drinks, sweets, flowers, candles, magazines, whatever they thought, whatever they could think of. One day Andrew came into the room with bigger bags as one of my friends read somewhere that because of the difficulty that you have with um, shortness of breath with COVID, that you battle to rest because you can't find a comfortable position. So she went ahead and bought me these huge Oxford pillows so that I could be comfortable. I had people that I could ask to pray for me when I was too weak to pray for myself. I would like to end off by saying that when we saw this in China, we thought that it was far away. When it swept through Europe, we thought, and we said, oh, it's because of the age of their population. And with America, we said it was about the way that they handled it. And even when we had our first case, we thought that we cannot be touched. I really want to implore you to please continue to be wise in the decisions that you make. And I want to end off by saying that we as Christians can continue to choose hope and to choose humility over arrogance, empathy over self-interest, and most of all, faith over fear. Thank you for your time. Hey guys, thank you so much for those testimonies to Karen, to Harold, to Nobu, and to Tay. Uh, thank you for reminding us that God is present with us during these times and that God desires to fulfill his purpose in and through our lives, even in some troubled waters and some complicated or difficult situations. Uh, we've looked in the past at what God has done and so grateful for it. We've heard stories of the present that I hope have been inspiring to you hearing these testimonies. Now I want us to look forward. Where, where does God want us to go over the next three to four months as we end our first year here at Every Nation Bryanston? And I really believe the answer is found in 1 Samuel chapter 29 and 30. This is a prophetic word I had received earlier on in the year and I never thought that I would need it as much as I have found that I've needed it over the past month. And I deeply believe that this is a word for us, a word in season and really a calling of God to us as a church and giving us a posture for the next three to four months. So here's the backdrop, David, 
has risen up the ranks of the nation of Israel. So much so that the people of Israel are, are, are giving him more fame than King Saul himself. King Saul got, gets jealous, and then as a result, he begins to pursue David, and David runs away, runs into the cave of Adullam, where he finds these misfits. The Bible literally calls them men who are depressed and uh, desolate and in debt. And, and these guys, they look around and they decide, you know what, uh, the guy who should actually lead us is David. And so David does. He moves from being rejected by King Saul and he's accepted by those who the world had rejected. And now here he is in this community and he, he's trying to figure out how to uh, bring a sense of livelihood to these men and, and so they commit to serve in the enemy's camp. They commit to go and work for the Philistines being a part of their army. Bear in mind, David had just killed Goliath, who was part of the Philistine army a few chapters before this, but now they are working for and with the Philistines. And so they start uh, gaining more territory and, and, and the, the, these misfits start earning income and, and, and increasing in number. But then the Philistines realize that they're about to go into war with the Israelites again. And so the leaders of the Philistines decide, what if David and these mighty men, what if they turn on us during the battle? And so again, David and his misfits get rejected. The Philistine leaders say, no, we're not gonna go with you to war against the Israelites, lest you turn on us and they're ostracized again. And they begin to make their way back home to Ziklag. And as they are going to Ziklag in uh, chapter 30, they walk into their home and realize there's nothing left but smoke. The property has been burnt up. Their wives and their children have been taken away. And all of a sudden, depression sets in. These mighty men who, who were taken up by David and were led by David, they begin to think, maybe we should just stone David. They're so depressed, they're so angry, they're so frustrated that they decide that maybe we should stone him. And the Bible says, David paused and he strengthened himself in the Lord. And after strengthening himself in the Lord, the Bible tells us that David inquired of the Lord, Lord, shall we pursue them? Shall we go after these people who have taken our children, taken our wives, taken our property? Should we go after them? Right now, I believe the word for us as every nation, Bryanston, is that we need to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. We need to strengthen ourselves in who God is, in what God has called us to, to not be distracted uh, by the things that we are finding in our way, but to, to, the, the, that the distractions themselves force us to have a greater sense of focus of knowing God and making him known. The Bible says he inquires of the Lord, but then the Lord responds to him. And this is the one verse I want to share with you what I believe God would want us to do over the next three to four months. Here's what it says in verse eight. Shall I pursue after this band? David asked. Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, pursue for you shall surely overtake and shall surely rescue. One word for us over the next three to four months is simply this, pursue. Let's go after it. Let's go after it as if we are confident that God is gonna give it to us, that we are going to recover all, not just for our sake, but for the sake of others. What do I mean by pursue? What, what are the practical steps that, that it, it looks like for us as every nation, Bryanston, to pursue? Very simply, one, we need to pursue our relationship with God, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, we need to intentionally for the next three to four months uh, pursue a relationship with God in a deeper way. 
how we read the Bible, how we pray, what we are trusting God for, our faith, uh, our deliberateness in finding out the heart of God for our lives and for our church. We need to pursue God in relationship. Secondly, we need to not only pursue him in relationship, but we need to pursue him in his mission. What do I mean by this? That we should continue to pursue God in the mission of reaching the lost and helping the least. This is our heart. From the beginning, we've wanted to be able to be a people who reach those who are far from God and help those who have their backs most against the wall. This is why every single day when you wake up and you uh, get ready to go to work or you wake up and get ready to go to school, all these things matter to God. Because God wants to allow through the passions he's given you, he wants to work through you and in you so that you might be able to reach those who are far from him and be able to help those who have their backs most against the wall. What you do matters. What you do matters. Dale Moody uh, said it like this, that we should never be afraid of failure, but instead we should be afraid of succeeding at things that don't matter. Things that won't count for eternity. You see, what counts in eternity is our relationship with God and what we have done in the mission of God that he has given us. This is why no matter who you are, no matter where you find yourself in your life, right now in your life, you have a purpose that you have been called for. And God has given you skill, given you a, a work environment, given you things all around you to be able to fulfill that which he has called you to do. And at the core of that which he has called you to do, it has to do with you fulfilling the mission of being bringing the redemption of God to bear in all the world by reaching those who are far from God and by helping those who have their backs most against the wall. This is what we do here at Every Nation, Bryanston. God has given you the spirit of God to be able to do this. Thirdly, what we want to pursue is not just a relationship with God, it's not just the mission of God, but we also want to pursue the community of God. The next three to four months, one of the things I am giving my time to is helping each and every person who calls Bryanston home to find a group, to find community, to make sure that you are seen, you are known, you are heard, you are cared for, and that you're doing exactly the same for other people. That you, you need to be in community. In fact, when you read the story and you continue to read the story of David here, uh, him and his mighty men begin to make their way to pursue that which God had told them to, to pursue. And they get to the river. And when they get to the river, there's about 200 men who decide that they cannot go. Why? Because they're too exhausted. But the rest decide they're going to go. And they go, they wage war, and they win. They bring back the spoils. And when they come back, the 400 men go, no, David, listen, um, only those who went to battle should be allowed to receive the spoil. And David said, no, those who went to battle and those who watch the baggage back home deserve the exact amount of reward. Whether you find yourself being tired or you feel like you have the energy to keep pressing and going, we are together. And I am praying for a greater togetherness. Now we, we never thought, never thought when we started that we are gonna see so many people coming and being a part of this church. As a result, I, I wish we were more ready to create the kind of community that I really believe all of us need to have in order to pursue the dreams of God for our lives. And so we are making sure to put the systems in place, the administration in place, to make sure that if you call this home, that you have a community around you that can support you, can encourage you, and that you can support and encourage. And so pursue is what we are going after. 
this one word that God is calling us to pursue, like we know we will get it. We will be able to recover all, not just for ourselves, but for everyone who calls this community their home. We want to recover the spoils of Jesus, the spoils of the kingdom. Everything we're doing is so that the lamb might receive his great reward. Everything we're doing, we're doing in light of eternity, not in light of the present. Therefore, we are pursuing for the next three to four months, we are pursuing a relationship with God in a more deeper and profound way. We are pursuing the mission of God to the least and to the lost. And we are pursuing community with each other by being in groups, by opening up our homes to even start new groups. Let us pursue relationship with each other to not just be attenders on a Sunday, but being a community from Monday through to Saturday. So practically, what does this look like? And here it is. As of next week, we're gonna start a brand new series for about 14 to 15 weeks on the book of Exodus titled The Good News for Misfits. This series is focusing on two things. One, it's gonna help you in your relationship with God uh, as you see a God in the Old Testament through the book of Exodus. I think it's gonna be such a phenomenal time to see the character and the will and purpose of God through the book of Exodus. But also, we are believing that this series is going to be such a relevant series for anyone who is not of the faith, anyone who feels far from God, and anyone with questions around justice, anyone with questions around where on earth is God, and anyone grappling with Christianity. This is a phenomenal time for you to invite friends uh, so they can engage with us and maybe even with you in your connect group through the series of Exodus. So that is practical step number one. The second thing we're gonna do, we are going to be relaunching and revamping our connect groups. And we're gonna have a, a booklet filled with a Bible reading plan as well as connect outline for each and every week for the next 15 weeks that's gonna detail out the whole of the Exodus uh, 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 sermon series. This is gonna allow for you in your groups to really engage through the word and really grow together uh, in your connect groups. And I wanna encourage you. Maybe you've been thinking, oh man, I don't wanna do the group thing. Just do it for the next three months. Try it out. That's all I'm asking. For the next three months, try out a group for the next three months. Some of you might say, hey, I wanna just do a group with my current family. I've got teenagers at home and the four or five of us, we're gonna just do a group here in our house. Maybe you can invite a neighbor or some friends who might be far from God or are really seeking for community. Invite them to your group over Zoom, however you wanna do it. And I really believe that this time will be helpful, not just for you, but for them. And so that outline will be available to you this coming week. You'll get it over text, but also we're gonna put it up on this platform next week, Sunday as well, and you can be able to access that PDF, which is gonna have multitude of resources for you for the Exodus series. Another thing we're gonna be doing in order to increase community is that we're gonna start some game nights uh, in some weeks to come where over Zoom, we're gonna invite different connect groups to uh, do some game challenges, whether it be 30 seconds or other games as well. I think this will be a fun time for us to interact with each other and maybe even challenge a few other churches uh, who we can take on on some game night. So we'd love for you to be involved in that. Also looking forward to one or two prayer evenings as well that we can uh, host over Zoom, live over Zoom. And if you want to be a part of that, that is going to be made available to you as well. Another thing we're gonna be doing to increase community is that in the upcoming Sundays, we're gonna start having live prayer sessions uh, uh, for individuals straight after the service. And, and we will let you know in each service, hey, after this, here is a link for you. Click onto this link and somebody will be there live on Zoom, ready to pray with you and connect with you. You might have questions or you just need prayer or even a prophetic word. We would love to serve you in that way as well. So the next three or four months, that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be taking time 
to pursue relationship with God, uh, pursue the mission of God and pursue community together. Again, I want to thank you for being the church that you are. Uh, it has been an utmost pleasure to be a part of this community and watch God do things that we never even thought that he would do. With that being said, I want to bless you in this way. May the Lord keep you and bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. Unto our God, your majesty.